Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here. A little bit of Hill Farmstead up in this piece in the form of their self-reliance Mutueka. Um, yeah, this came in a box of Hill Farmstead I got just before Christmas time. Um, they shipped the PA. I'm running a border PA, so I had it shipped there and just been slowly working my way through these. Um, you know, typically when I get Hill Farmstead, I can't help myself. Um, and just kind of rip through stuff like a wild pack animal, but I don't know. I'm long playing this one. Anyway, this would be the third one I opened, I believe, so far. Um, I forget the first one. The second one was, um, was it, uh, I forget, I forget. One was a cherry farmstead ale. I'm horrible at these, so just type in hill farmstead. Anyway, uh, self reliance It's a dry hopped farmstead India pale ale conditioned in oak barrels. And you're like, okay, IPA, Mutueka, oak barrels. It has time on it, so it's not going to be what you typically expect. Um, we have here, it says, um, Ralph Waldo Emerson's essay, Self-Reliance, inspires and compels our present reflection, examination, and refinement. To that end, we present you a reimagining of our Self-Reliance series, one of our exploratory pale ales, now our farmstead single hop India pale ales. This edition features hand-selected Mutueka hops from Freestyle Farm, our agricultural partner in Upper Mutuere, New Zealand. Man. Let's see, we have um, bottle conditioning since June 13th, 2023. So we're in, actually it's St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. So uh, this is the 16th of March, 2024. And it was a 2022 hop harvest. This has like a weird kind of dust in my fridge. It has this like, I don't know. It's almost like a beer explosion in, in my fridge at one point, which is certainly possible. What I do, not necessarily explode, but um, what I do is, um, you know, whenever I have like really big kind of barrel aged bohemothy beers, um, typically I'll pour some and I'll put a little cap on it. Uh, one of these rubber corks that I use so often. I will need one for this review. Where did I put? There's one right there. So one of these, every now and then the pressure gets great and it pops off and causes a little. So I get a little bit of residue on my beers from time to time. Oh man. Wow. Man, that was on there. Good God. That's a really and I always talk about that might come start coming out of the glass. Um, I always talk about, you know, Hill Farms that has the best caps here for this like, you know, they do the extra ultra seal kind of caps on this one. It has a really deep crown on it. Hopefully that comes on the camera it's like comes down quite a bit more than your typical beer so that's why I think it was a little bit harder to get off uh, I assume um, you know with this being a IPA and being bottle conditioned yada yada, yada I th they think it might have a little bit more pressure to it um, if that's the case hence the uh, the additional Fortifications. Uh, Label wise, it, this is, I don't remember if this is just a self reliance series artwork on this, but I've had bottles with the same exact Hill Farmstead background on it, so I don't know if that's just part of this self reliance series or maybe some of their dry hopped uh, oak aged IPAs all get the same kind of label. Well, I dig it. It's a little departure from what they typically do. Um, beer wise, I mean, you have this soft little hazy, um, soft little hazy glow. I mean, it's not going to be considered a hazy IPA by today's standards, but it's got the ultra soft haze with this really, really kind of pretty, like, little snow globe almost champagne-like kind of carbonation going for it. Uh, nice white kind of tight head to it, a little bit of soapy edges, so it looks the part of a nice, more, you know, farmhouse ale, saison kind of vibes to it. So, anyway, let's even get a nose. Very fruity, extremely fruity, but in, again, more of a Saison slash farmhouse ale kind of vibes here. Bursting at the seams of like grape skin, white grape skin, white grape uh, peachiness is abounding here. Um, not necessarily what I think you typically expect from New Zealand, like, you know what I mean, Southern Hemisphere hops. Sure, there's a tropical fruitiness to it too. There are bits and pieces of what you'd expect from like a New Zealand hop. But when you're talking about New Zealand hops, you're talking about an IPA, and that's what I said or I mentioned during the label uh, read on it, is that it's not going to be your what you'd expect a, a, a Tueka hop IPA. With the aging, with what they're doing, it's a 2022 hop harvest with a 2023 bottle conditioning date. So obviously they're using a little bit of aged hops on it. 
it comes off way more fruity and way more peachy but in that kind of farmhouse ale slash saison kind of sense a little bit of tannic um a little bit of tannic to the hops too that's a little bit of the age showing on it and there's a little bit of kind of it's not acidic it's not sour by any stretch but there's a little snappiness to the way this kind of uh, you could tell there's a, probably a little bit of some kind of lactobacillus, just a little touch of it in there, giving a little bit of pop on the sour on the things. I don't think it's going to be a sour beer. I think it's going to be have a soft little tartness to it and probably let that sweetness and those hops kind of shine through. But it, it actually is a very, very vibrant nose. Very, very big. Even touches of small vanilla there coming from the wood. So there's a lot going on here aromatically. For some reason, I think it's going to flip the script and come off a little bit different in the taste. I hope it kind of comes off as one of those kind of pH balance, same as your body is kind of beer that I talk about loving so much. Kind of a thing Phil Hill Farmstead does quite a bit, so that wouldn't be far off if that actually were the case. Anyway, let's just dive right in. Cheers, y'all. Okay. It does have a little punchy acidic thing to it uh, it's there in the nose but i thought it was going to be a little bit more tempered on the taste it's again not sour I, I would never classify this as a sour beer it just has this punchy tartness to it that for me has to be a yeasty slash flora and fauna of the barrel you know what barrels they're using they talked about condition in oak barrels it almost tastes like it's in a white wine barrel. That's what it was uh, conditioned in. Now they're talking about um, just oak barrels here. If they put it in a wine barrel, I'm pretty sure Hill Farmstead will call it out on here. I don't think I see anything in specific about that in here. So I'm, I'm assuming it's probably a fooder slash multi-use barrel that has a little bit of personality to it, a little bit of liveliness to it that's where you're getting that tartness that's where you're getting that acidity from um it kind of reminds me again if i'm going to associate that tartness in the city because it really isn't all that sour it's more of a white wininess here so when you take the nose on this which is that peachy uh, white grape kind of thing and then you uh, drop into the taste and you get that that tart white wine vibe um, again, I'm not a wine person, so I couldn't speak intelligently about wine, but I've drank white wine before, and this is kind of the vibes I get on it, so that's kind of my basic interpretation of what it is. I'm getting that tartness from that combination of the little critters that were in the barrel that they use in, in combination with probably, honestly, the way the hops are showing, because the fruitiness here is something elevated beyond just a straight oak barrel. So I think it's a combination of those two things. I think it's the yeasties and beasties of what was naturally dosed with maybe in combination with what's in the barrel on top of those aged kind of mutuek hops which are showing very very fruity very very uh grape skinny very very peachy for me that little acidic pop nice sweetness to it it's probably a little bit sweeter actually let me rewind it probably a decent amount sweeter did it call an abv on this I'd be really curious to find the ABV for this, if it's not on the bottle. It's it's actually quite a bit sweeter than I typically have for Hill Farmstead farm farmhouse sales. So that is an interesting twist. I think it works really well in here with that little acidic pop, and um, and then what you have on that back end after all of there, you know, the fruitiness, that tart acidity, that sweetness, poppy of pop of sweetness is that it finishes relatively dry. I mean, there's a little lingering sweetness because of that elevated, um, uh, res I don't even know if it's a residual sugar thing or just, um, it has to be because there's no fruit addition to it. But you have the dryness of the oakiness. You have the dryness of those hops, which just fe feels like it's generally pretty heavily dosed hops. And just, again, aged hops and bottle condition is going to temper a lot of that kind of sharpness on those hops. So it finishes relatively dry for beer... I hesitate to call sweet, but sweeter than what you typically expect from Hill Farmstead. I love this, actually. This is probably one of my more favorite Hill Farmstead beers I've had. Uh, could we end sentence here? Maybe as of late, but it might be an end sentence kind of thing. There's just something about it that comes off a little bit different for me. You know, um, the, the beers that I typically have from them, you know, um, not that Sean's beers are just typical across the board, but, you know, their IPAs ring in a specific area 
um, you know, their um, loggers. Again, same thing. You know, all along with their farmhouse sales, those fruit farmhouse sales, um, you know, uh, up until their stouts and stuff like that. This is kind of a little bit unique. Maybe it's my lack of uh, exposure to a ton of hill farm said you know i get my fair share but not nearly as much as a lot of people i know and this just seems a little bit more kind of out of what i typically expect in a very very good way how that tartness is showing how that sweetness is a little bit more elevated the way the hops are playing here and how it finishes relatively dry enough while still having that touch of sweetness kind of plays back from forth off each other i think this is fantastic honestly it's the beer I say this from time to time. It's the beer I didn't know I needed, but beer I kind of wanted. Truth be told, I opened up my. I didn't want to. I didn't know I was reviewing this tonight. Uh, it was my son's birthday party today. He is now asleep because he ran himself ragged and he is not conscious to this world. My wife was just tired. She wanted to settle in for the night, so I figured come out to the shed. I'll watch a little bit. I'm gonna rewatch the Sprano. So I actually have Tony Sprano staring at me right now up here, and I was like, I have an unboxing to do. But I'm like, I want to drink a lager, something light. None, no, lo nothing small in my beer fridge. I don't know why. I mean, I have some low ABV hazies. Um, I have, you know, a couple low ABV porter stouts. But I just want, wanted something lighter, lighter and drinkable. And this fit the bill. I assumed it would fit the bill. I don't even know what the ABV is on it. We'll have to see if we can find it. And I was like, you know what? Let's just review this and hope hope for the best like we're just gonna be bad or anything and it's honestly hitting a mark that i didn't know i really needed it's light it's effervescent it's beautiful but it's still punchy and volumetric it has a personality to it and like i said a personality outside of what i typically expect from a farmhouse hail from hill farm said mm. again not that anything should be outside of sean's you know um what's the word i'm looking for repertoire you know what I'm getting. Every sip, I get a little bit more of a punchier bittering from the hops. A little aged, a little kind of old lambic style kind of bittering on it. And I dig it quite a bit. Yeah, like I said, one of the better Hill Farmstead beers I've had in quite some time. And I'm glad it's a 750 because I think this is a drink of beer. We'll hold that judgment off, actually, for a ABV review. But anyway, um, is this one of the better... It's not an IPA. <laughs> it's not some Mutueka based beers. Farmstead Hills. Uh, Saison slash Farmstead Ales that I've had as like, yes. Now, Rushmore status? Yes. Uh, value and availability? I don't know what I paid for these. I think if I cut all the bottles straight down the middle, it was around $16 a bottle, give or take. And I think that was including shipping and everything with the box that I got. Not going to get too hot and bothered about that and leave you with, if you like what, will you like this? Um, if you like aged Mutueka and farmhouse ales, a little bit of acidity and drinkability and oak and all the, I guess all the stuff that I said in this review, and you'll like this. There you go. Review in the books. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, Hell Farmstead. Have you been to the brewery? Have you had their beers? Have you had this beer? Let's talk about it down there. What is your favorite Hell Farmstead beer of all time? Let's talk about it. All the fun stuff down there. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying some good beer right now. Hope we'll see you next time. Cheers, y'all.